for this example, we're going to embed a while loop inside of another while loop and see where that leads us. So we have a while loop on the inside there. All of the contents take constant time. So we need to create an iteration table and see what happens. Iteration. And the loop variable for the inner while loop, which is j, And then let's see what happens. J starts at one. After one iteration, we are adding by four, so we have J equals five. After two iterations, we add by four again. After K iterations, we have one plus four times K. When does this terminate? Well, it stops when one plus four times K is equal to the stopping condition of the inner while loop, which is 2 times i. We want to solve that for the number of iterations, so solve that for k. We get k equals 2i minus 1 over 4. I'm going to do a bit of simplification here that I will also allow you to make when you're solving problems like this, which is I'm going to say k is approximately 2i over 4 which is just i over 2, ignoring that small subtraction that we have at the end there. That is a difference of, at most, one iteration, so it's not going to impact anything. Now, let us begin analyzing the outer while loop. First, we want to understand what, how long does it take to do one run of the outer while loop. Well, the body of the inner while loop, lines 6 through 9, takes constant time, so the, running an entire instance of the outer while loop will take ci over 2 time. If you want to be really lazy here, this is a nice trick, is I'm going to do some changes of notation here to make my life convenient. I am going to call the cost of the body of the inner while loop c prime which means that this cost would be c prime i over 2 c over 2 or c prime over 2 is just some constant so i'm going to call this cost here just c i where maybe we note somewhere off to the side that c is equal to c prime over 2 so someone knows we did the bookkeeping somewhere along the way, but we got lazy, so. Now, in order to understand the outer while loop, we're going to have to make an iteration table. So let's make our iteration table over here. Iteration. And the loop variable for the outer while loop, which is i. Zero. We start i at 1, and then we're updating it by multiplying by 3, then multiply by 3 again. After, and here we want to be careful with notation. We've already used the letter k to have a special meaning in our problem. We've used k to represent the number of iterations of the inner while loop. In order to guarantee we don't do anything sort of bad with notation, I'm going to use a different letter here, gamma, like we used before. And after the gamma iteration, we have to the gamma. When does this stop? Well, it stops when my generic expression for i, which is 3 to the gamma, is equal to the stopping condition, which is n. Solve that for gamma, and we get gamma equals log base 3 of n. That quantity can be helpful, but we'll actually see that that actual value is has little impact on this particular problem. So t of n is equal to, we're going to do something similar to our last while loop problem that we saw, where we are going to use the values of i from our second iteration table, the one here in pink, and plug those into the cost of a single iteration of 
the outer while loop. So what do I mean by that? Well, the cost of the first run would be c times i, and i starts at 1. The cost of the next run would be c times i, where i is 3. And then c times i, where i is 9, plus up till the last value, which is c times n. I'm going to reverse the order of this summation to make it easier to work with. I like summations when they look geometric like this, when they are every single term increases by a constant multiple or is constantly divided by a constant multiple. I like them to be decreasing. It t tends to make the analysis easier. So I'm going to write this as cn plus what is the term that comes immediately before cn? We are updating the value of i by multiplying by 3. And therefore, to look at the previous term, we would need to divide by 3. So this is cn over 3 plus cn over 9 plus all the way down until 3c and then c. I'm going to factor out the largest value that appears in that summation. I'm left with 1 plus a third plus a ninth plus all the way down until 1 over n for the last term. By factoring out cn out of c, I'm left with 1 over n. Now I need to bound this above. To bound it above, I'm going to replace that finite geometric summation with an infinite geometric series. So I have 1 plus a third plus a ninth plus an infinite summation there. This is equal to cn times, using a similar formula to what we had before, an infinite geometric series it converges to 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, which in this case is a third. We're continually dividing by 3. So this equals 1 over 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. So this is 3cn over 2. And as we've seen before, we want to bound this below. To bound it below, we are going to drop every single term except for the first because we all we need to do is make this look like something times n. There are a million ways we could do this, the easiest of which would be to drop everything except the first term. So this stuff here says that it is in big O of n. This tiny bit of work here says that it is in big omega of n. Therefore, with those two facts combined together, it must be in theta of n. So our conclusion. So t of n is in theta of n. As we've seen before with while loops, you need to be careful when bounding them if they involve some sort of geometric progression because it is easy to accidentally do this incorrectly if you're not careful with your math.